Oh, Taylor Swift is annoying. Yeah, this is a this is something that um I'm really struggling to kind of understand what is actually going on here, whether or not Taylor Swift is playing the victim or whether that she's a, a victim of you know some um industry bullying or whatever she's calling it. So some background of the story. I'm sure you guys are aware with there's a little there's some static between Taylor Swift and Kanye West, I think it starts from, right? Maybe that's where the static starts from. Obviously, Kanye West has that infamous moment where he goes on stage and quote-unquote robs Taylor Swift of a moment by saying that Beyonce deserved the award for video of the year that that, that year during the UVMAs. The backlash from that, you know, Pink calls him a fucking idiot, whatever she did. You know, people hate Kanye as they do. He got cancelled for another time. Um, and then, you know, that's when the static started between him and Taylor Swift. Eventually, they get they, they become friends again or become amicable but I think in between that period her and Kim Kardashian share a bit of jibes here and there some in you some so you know some um some jabs get thrown left right and center and then I'm pretty sure just before is it famous the track famous where he has where Kanye has all those wax figurines in bed I think Kanye has a line about Taylor Swift um Kim Kardashian secretly records that phone call he calls Taylor Swift on loudspeaker tells her she's going to be in the in the track he mentions it in there doesn't maybe detail exactly what he says, but kind of details that he kind of mentioned her in the track and just to kind of give her a heads up, the track drops and then Taylor Swift decides to play the victim saying that she's been sexually deva I don't know, she says something about being, you know, um, stripped naked and her integrity being taken away. Kim Kardashian obviously um, takes that as an affront. Don't you dare say that to my husband. She releases the footage of the actual Taylor Swift phone call. Tip attack goes on. That's one bit of the drama. Then the Scooter Braun thing, I'm not too sure what's happening there, but or where the beef started from. I know why Taylor Swift doesn't like him anymore now, but where the beef started from, I'm pretty sure maybe it had something to do with the fact that Scooter Braun was Kanye's ex-manager, and maybe she thought, she maybe went to Scooter Braun to tell Kanye to chill. Scooter Braun probably said, hey, it's not my business, or something happened along those lines, and she probably maybe felt Scooter Braun was siding with Kanye, not with her. I don't know, something along those kind of lines. But whatever happened, um, Scooter Braun got into a position where he was able to buy the record label that um, Taylor Swift originally produced police her music on. I think the first few albums, maybe up until 2017 or something like that, um, which which is essentially the main chunk of where Taylor Swift was able to make most of her money and become the big pop star that we know nowadays, right? So a really big, hefty catalog. So the word on the internet is that um, this record label, I think Big Machine is the record label it's called, the, the original owner of this record label offered um, the mast offered Taylor Swift her masters to, pu to purchase them back from him, right? But, um, but it seems like Taylor Swift said no. So either she said no because she wanted to move on and she didn't want anything to do with this guy or this label because she had a bad experience with him because maybe he's, he's close to Scooter Braun or maybe Taylor Swift said no because even though she's a mega pop star, she's maybe not as cash rich as we all think she is, right? She might not have that much money. She might have been signed to a 360. She might have made all her money from touring. And even if you tour a lot, there's still only one of you, right? There's not a lot of kind of, you know, different revenue streams coming in there. So she might not have had the money um, to hand in cash to maybe purchase her masters. And then as as um, fate would uh, as fate would kind of enlist, um, Scooter Braun then sweeps along and decides to buy that record label, including all Taylor Swift's masters, which is, you know, a really, really big coup. And maybe in the frame in a kind of you know when you're looking at it objectively maybe it might have been a bit of a middle thing about the Taylor Swift because they've got beef going on but I don't know but the plain facts are Taylor Swift's masters were available to purchase Taylor Swift said no I'm not going to purchase them Scooter Braun comes and purchase them everything's all well and good isn't it right but somehow within all of this drama Taylor Swift has somehow tried to play the victim and tried to make it seem as if she's being bullied and on paper it just looks like a straight business though it looks like somebody had the money to buy them you couldn't buy them and now they are doing what anyone would do if they bought something and it's now the intellectual property. They're protecting it, right? It's now Scooter Braun's intellectual property. So it's, it's within his best interest to do what's best for his intellectual property because he wants to make money off it. So why would he allow Taylor Swift to go and use or license the material without paying accordingly like anyone else, right? Even if you made it, it doesn't matter anymore, right? Um, um, and now um, Taylor Swift put out this massive statement essentially kind of playing the victim and crying. And I'm not too sure what to think of it. I'm not too sure whether or not I believe Taylor do I believe Scooter Braun, or whether or not this is just an indication of how fucked up the record industry is, right? Whereas, you know, why is it that you make something and suddenly, in record industry, it's the only place that's like that, right? Where suddenly, the moment you make something and you get signed to a label, your percentage or your, your ownership pie dwindle, like kind of shrinks every time that you basically add another person to contribute or to basically help out. They basically take a chunk. Oh, so don't, they're like, you know, um, don't worry, I, I don't need any money from it. Imagine you make a hit record. Don't worry, I don't need any money from it. Just give me a bit of your, 
a bit of your masters, a bit of your kind of um, ownership of the of the actual song. And then by the time this song actually blows up, you don't recoup anything and the other people recoup more of it. You end up with like 40%, maybe less than 40% of the ownership of the actual record. So let's read Taylor Swift's statement then we can talk about it on the other side. So this is Taylor Swift's um, statement. She made a tweet, I think just the other day about it, right? Um, so it says the following. Um, the actual tweet is like, I, I don't know what else to do, right? So she's essentially saying, you know, I've, I've exhausted all the options privately and now I'm having to go to social media and beg my fans, other celebrity um, um, out there to kind of, you know, fight my fight for me, which is, you know, is what it is. So it starts off with guys. It's been announced recently that the American Music Awards will be honoring me with the Artist of the Decade Award at this year's ceremony. Cool. Amazing, right? I've been planning to perform a medley of all my hits throughout the decade on the show. Scott Borchetta and Scooter Braun have now said that I will not be allowed to perform my old songs on television because they claim that would be re-recording my music before I'm allowed to next year. Additionally, this isn't the only way I had planned to telling you this news. Netflix has created a documentary about my life for the past few years. Scott and Scooter have declined to use the use of my older music or performances footage from this project, even though there is no mention of either of them or Big Machine Records anywhere in the film. Scott Borchetta told my team that they'll allow me to use my music only if I do these things. If I agree not to re-record copycat versions of my songs next year, which is something I'm both legally allowed to do and looking forward to. Okay, yeah, this is something that she threatens to do, I think, when Scooter Braun signed her masters or got her masters. She's like, oh, don't worry, they're valueless. Anyway, I'm just going to go re-record all my old hits and put them out again. Which is a bit silly because, you know, it, she's, if she thinks she's going to get the same reach us it depends really, innit? Maybe Tessu's fans are fucking psychos, but it's not going to hit the same. You're not going to get the same... Maybe she's just doing it in terms of revenue stream because if she releases them self tight on her own kind of label, she'll probably get all the income, which is probably more than what she would have got previously. But again, it's a, it's a, it's a really laborious task to do anyway in the beginning. It might be something cool to say out loud, but to go back and re record her entire catalogue. She's one of the weird pop stars that actually has, like if you go on her um, on Spotify and you go on all the, like, the plays and all her songs and her albums, She's one of the rare pop stars where a lot of the tracks have got, you know, millions and millions of, of fucking listens. It's not as if, like, she's only got five quote-unquote singles that people like. The majority of the album is, like, you know, right up Taylor Swift fans' alley. Like, they love everything about her. So it's going to be a real, real slog to get that done. But again, you know, maybe she's that pissed off with them, she'll do it. Um, so she says, yeah, if I agree, she's, they, they told them she's only allowed to use the songs if she agrees not to re-record it. What she says she's both allowed to do legally. And also... Uh, told my team that I need to stop talking about him and Scooter Braun. I feel very strongly about sharing what is happening to me could change the awareness level of other artists and partnerships and part especially help avoid these similar fate. The message being sent out to me is very clear. Basically, be a good little girl and shut up or you'll be punished, which is not true, really. She's, again, she's conflating two issues there. I think there's a personal issue going on there and obviously an issue with the record industry. But what it seems like to me is that the record industry is broken in terms of the ownership, right? Uh, 360 deals, <coughs> um, labels trying to dip in and take money out of your live shows. Um, your masters being held by a label indefinitely and you don't be able to get them back. Like essentially, that's your intellectual property and you're signing it away because most artists in the beginning have little to no resources or money and they need a basically an advance or a loan from the record label in order to record songs, get features, fly, perform, um, you know, get a wardrobe, makeup, whatever it may be, just to kind of live the artist lifestyle. They use that money as a loan. But then the, uh, the label, of course, uh, get the money on the back end through the release of the music. And sometimes an artist, you sometimes maybe don't think long term. You don't maybe think you're going to be that big of a star. You blow up. You're then seeing less money coming in for your album sales and suddenly you kind of, you know, your hands in there exasperated. But I think what needs to happen in general is that nowadays, especially from here interviews with Russ and stuff, there's no real excuse for an artist nowadays to sign away all their masters or to sign away their rights or to give permission to the label to do whatever they want with their likeness. You have to be cognitive and aware that maybe taking a hit in the beginning, maybe tightening your belt, maybe working part time, saving money, maybe doing a crowdfunding thing, launching a Kickstarter, having a Patreon. Somehow that would allow you not to kind of take a loan from a record company as long as basically withholding taking money from record label as long as you can so that when you finally do have a record label agreement you have that thing which they call a partnership which is essentially you maybe licensing um the label to release one album or signing on for a couple of albums or whatever it may be just to get the bag which is completely different for signing your life away to a record label having them sign you lock you down for five albums on a one million dollar deal but then in year two, you end up, you know, far exceeding um, that, that $1 million deal cap and you end up being the biggest star in the world. Suddenly now those terms are making sense, but you're locked in a contract. So it's just a 
question of patience. And obviously on Taylor Swift's side of it, it also shows that she's a mega, mega star. She's one of the biggest stars in the world. Pop star out of this world, right? And essentially, she didn't have the money, didn't have the cash to buy her own masters, which again is an indictment on her as well because why wouldn't you buy your own masters? Why wouldn't you, even if it's your enemy holding them, why wouldn't you want to make a deal with them to get your masters back so that you don't have to deal with those guys ever again? Now she's kind of going on social media and trying to make it seem as if they did some backhanded thing. They didn't do anything backhanded. One guy wanted to sell a record label that had your masters on it. He offered it to you. You didn't buy it. And then some other guy that you don't like bought it. It's just, that's the nature of business. And now he's looking up his intellectual property. I don't see anything wrong with that personally. Um, Anyway, she continues. This is wrong. Neither of these men had a hand in writing these songs. Again, the inclusion of men. She's trying to make it into some sort of weird gendered feminist battle, which it obviously isn't. It's really bizarre to say these sort of things. How many clients does Stuart, Scooter Braun has? How many clients have you Scooter Braun have that are female? Do you think Scooter Braun would be able to exist in this industry being some misogynistic pig that goes after, um, you know, unsuspecting artists and hoovers up all their masters? It makes no sense. You just didn't do your business properly. You know what I mean? It's just your, it's just your, it's, it's, a, it's, it's her issue, her business. She's trying to make it a business of everyone else, really. Her business argument is a bit shit for somebody as popular as her, it seems like, right? Uh, please let Scott Porchetta and Scooter Ball know how you feel about this. Gaslighting people, um, setting a mob on them, which is really, really bad. Um, Scooter also manages several artists who I really believe care about other artists and their work. Please ask them for help with this. I'm hoping that maybe they can talk to some sense into the men who are exercising tyrannical control over someone who just wants to play music she wrote. Dude, why don't you buy the music back yourself then? I don't, I don't understand what this complaint is about. This is insane. Or license license it off Scooter Braun like just be a grown up why is she complaining on, on social media it's about something that is her business I especially um, I'm especially asking for help from the Carlisle group who put up um, the money for the sale of my music to his two men I just want to be able to perform my own music that's it I've tried to work this out privately through my team but I have not been able to resolve anything right now my performance at the VMA is an Netflix documentary and any other recorded events I'm planning to play until 2020 are a question mark I love you guys and thought you should know what's going on Taylor of course now she's kind of pressurizing her fans and guilt tripping them saying look if you want me to perform I've got loads of stuff planned between now and November 2020, a whole year's worth of content. I won't be able to do it unless these guys give me back my masters. What did she expect them to do? To sign over her masters to her with no fee? Like, just give them back to her? Like, with no, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any business sense whatsoever. Scoot Broom paid for them. If you want them back, you have to pay, pay him for them as well. Or maybe he just doesn't want to sell them, which is he's perfectly willing to, he's perfectly within his rights to do as well. If this goes to court, it's going to get thrown out, which is why she's probably resolving to this kind of, social media pressure thing because if they guess like the, the business is done legitimately it sounds like by the sounds of it but again maybe it just highlights in general issues in the red coin industry where artists are so willy-nilly and okay with just signing their life away and i never really got that understand again maybe it comes from my experience having seen a lot of the early grime guys struggling to release music and struggling to gain any kind of traction in the commercial world now is it's the best time to be a uk rapper right because you know labels in the uk are kind of you know falling over themselves to sign anyone on grime daily and stuff but back in the day they were seen as the dregs of the music industry right no one wanted to kind of acknowledge them um the lightning rod moment was obviously when Dizzy Rascal won the Mercury Prize Award for Boy, Boy in the Corner. That kind of changed everything for the most part. But, you know, a lot of the, you know, even Roll Deep, Wiley suffered from the whole signing into a record label and having to produce corny bubblegum tunes. Uh, Skepta had, had an issue with that as well at some point. Um, but nowadays, artists don't have any excuse for signing their life the way. You know what is, you know what the deal was with 360 deals. You know what record labels are in. Record labels are in, in the business of serving themselves, not serving the artists. So you have to be very aware of it. So for Taylor Swift to use social media to kind of cajole her fan base to essentially pressurize another dude to sell her masters back to her, even though she was given the opportunity to buy them herself, is really out of hand. But maybe I don't know what's going on and I'm a bit mistaken. So if, if anyone wants to clear it up for me, feel free. But it seems like Taylor Swift is really out of pocket for this one in that respect. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? But definitely check it out. It's gonna keep rumbling on and on. We're not gonna see the end of this. We're probably gonna hear from Justin Bieber very soon because he's you know he's a ride or die scooter brown guy. Um, but yeah, really weird situation, man. Very very strange. Um, Taylor Swift sounds annoying anyway in general, man. She sounds like a fucking nightmare to deal with in general. Absolute headache.